Okay, we're going to get started. Call the meeting to order. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Trustee Brewer? Here. Trustee Carter? Here. Trustee Grant? Here. Trustee Tate? Here. Trustee Todd? Here. Trustee Zutan? Here. Okay, first item. Uh, Okay, we moved by Trustee um, Zupan, second by Trustee Todd. And the clerk, please call the roll. She made a motion. She made a motion. She seconded. Okay, we're going 
Okay, we will continue with the meeting. First item, uh, CMAP presentation um, by Director uh, Wizenwadi, and also it will be a comment and um, presentation by Stephanie Filfer and Maggie Jar of CMAP. I just caution that um, I know you may not speak up, but if, if you have to, kind of bring the mic up because uh, people will don't have you to say it. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Um, as you know, we're nearing the end of our comprehensive plan. Um, shortly, we'll be having presentations before the planning uh, zoning planning commission. Um, and also before the village board. Um, that will come probably in March um, and in April. So we'll be looking to get that finalized here soon. Um, Stephen Ostrander from CMAP was our uh, lead with CMAP on this project. So he's done an outstanding job and is continuing to do an outstanding job, uh, making sure that um, everything's being done correctly, making sure that the, the plan um, is a a good viable uh, plan for the village, not something you want to just put on the shelf. So, um, so the next step in that is actually, you know, taking care of the objectives that are set out in the comprehensive plan. So, um, Christy De Laurentis from uh, South Suburban Mayors and Managers um, was working with CMAP on trying to identify communities that would benefit from a uh, embedded uh, staff person from CMAP. So that's why we're here today. Um, this is kind of the next step in the process of uh, moving forward with the implementation of the comprehensive plan. So without further ado, I am going to pass this over to Maggie first, and she's going to kind of take it from here. Okay. I was say you might just hand it to her. <laughs> How about that? All right. <laughs> well, thank you, Joe. Um, good evening, everyone. Again, my name is Maggie Jar. I'm a planner with the Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning, or CMAP, uh, and I'm joined by Stephanie Pfeiffer, Deputy Executive Director of Planning um, at CMAP. And tonight, we're here to seek your approval of a memorandum of understanding which would formalize a partnership between CMAP and the village uh, under CMAP's new Embedded Staff Planner Program, or what I'll call the ESP program. Um, I'm going to provide an overview of that program and also some background on the staff planner position since uh, if you do approve the MOU, I will be um, the village's new staff planner under this program. And then Stephanie and I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. So to start, uh, CMAP as the official regional planning agency for Northeastern Illinois knows that local governments play in absolutely essential role in developing and implementing community goals for the future. And we've noticed that Sauk Village is doing just that. The village's recent project to update its comprehensive plan is really a great example of how the village is taking important steps to set and achieve its goals. So really it's because of that uh, forward thinking, that commitment, that CMAP is interested in partnering with the village under this new program, uh, the ESP program, which is being offered as part of um, CMAP's uh, arm of technical assistance services. Um, so the proposal here um, is that um, would be here in the village um, on site two days per week and dedicating one additional day per week to the village from CMAP's offices. Um, also coordinating work from other CMAP staff that may have supplemental areas of expertise um, to support the program. You might be wondering what the staff planner, what I would be doing. Um, and I always like to start by saying that as planners, we don't have um, usually the luxury of living in every community that we work in, um, and thus cannot assume to know what the priorities or main concerns are. So initially, straight out of the gate, it's going to be a lot of listening. It's going to be getting to know this community through conversations with uh, elected officials, with village staff, uh, residents, business owners, really trying to get a handle on what are the main concerns and issues um, here in Sauk Village. Of course, building off all the great momentum of the comprehensive plan update. It's then a matter of working collaboratively with the mayor and with village staff to develop an action plan that clearly defines what the goals of the program will be um, and what sorts of activities I would be undertaking on behalf of the village. Um, 
you know, Joe has brought up already the possibility of, you know, as an example here, uh, convening a joint workshop once the new comprehensive plan is adopted to convene um, elected officials, you know, boards, committees, and staff to talk about how the comprehensive plan can be used um, in the unique roles of each of these groups and how each group might be uh, responsible for administering that plan. So that is an example of um, the type of activity that, that the staff planner that I might uh, undertake. I wanted um, not only to describe what the staff planner role would be, but also take this opportunity tonight to uh, introduce myself um, and give you a little bit more background about uh, my work experience. I've been at CMAP uh, over four, four years uh, working as a planner. Uh, before joining the agency, I worked as an architect and outreach coordinator focused mainly on affordable housing design and development in the Chicago area. But since joining CMAP, I've been lucky to work on a very wide range of local planning projects, managing um, all phases of con community engagement, uh, assessing existing local conditions, conducting public visioning exercises and workshops, uh, developing uh, the draft plans themselves, and overseeing adoption proceedings. Uh, my project experience has ranged from creating comprehensive plans to sub-area plans and bike pedestrian plans, um, to drafting development regulations and updating zoning codes to help implement the goals of those plans, um, and all the way to conducting and developing customized um, trainings and workshops with elected officials and staffs to help uh, improve their uh, technical skills. I'm also very proud to have been participating in developing CMAP's new uh, suite of services um, aimed at building the local um, building capacity of local governments. Um, and so this program, the ESP program, um, is one of those new kind of service types that we're really looking forward to, to piloting. And so I just want to reiterate that um, I'm very excited, we all are back at CMAP, about this new program, and even more so excited to be partnering with Sock Village on this, who we think will be a great partner. Um, I personally am really looking forward to getting to know you all over the next uh, couple of years. I just want to emphasize um, once more that this will be a very collaborative process um, and that the action plan that's developed um, at the onset would be something that is really collaborative and also a flexible document because we know that um, priorities shift over time and new opportunities arise and we want to be sure that the staff planner that you have in place um, is able to, to respond um, as, as things pop up. So, um, that said, Stephanie and I would be happy to answer any questions that you have, um, and also I want to mention that the swag you have in front of you, the tote bag, and on to 2050 uh, executive summary, that's um, some new materials that came out of the new comprehensive plan that CMAP adopted back in the fall. So um, please, if you're curious to look at more, um, our website has um, additional information, or if you're curious to see more local technical assistance projects that we've completed under this program. But with that, <laughs> I'll be brief so that we have time to answer any questions that you might have about the ESP program uh, or the position. Okay, does any trustees have any questions to ask? Okay. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> that was quick. Um, this is very, if I may, just want to kind of add a little bit to, to what uh, Maggie was saying is that, you know, one of the things that, that CMAP is bringing to the village is something that after she's done with her job here in two years is that there's a legacy left um, behind. So there's something that the village can build on and work on that's that's developed through this process. So um, that was kind of a, a very good point that uh, was made at our initial meeting when we talked about this. So um, I wanted y'all to know that. Um, the other thing is is that this costs the village absolutely nothing. So. This is actually funded through CMAP, so uh, through our partnership with them. So um, that's all I had to add. Sorry. Okay. Um, again, are there any questions? Because um, this is a, we'll be entering into a intergovernmental um, agreement with CMAP, and it's all spelled out here. So if there's any questions, now the time to ask them. And um, that being said, I will ask the clerk to have this on the agenda for next week to be voted on. Okay. And thank you for the bag. You're welcome. <laughs> and uh, I'm to 2050. <laughs> I like that.
<laughs> 30 years from now, I don't know what I'll be doing. I may not be doing, no, I won't be doing this, but okay. Well, Thank you so very, sure. very much. Okay, there's no questions. We'll move on to the next item. Thank you so much. Look forward to working with you. Look forward to seeing you. The next item, um, finance and administration of budget proposal versus actual. Everyone got a copy of that. Um, there was an emergency um, from uh, Ms. Sufton. She was not here, but she will be able to answer all questions. Um, hope she'll be back tomorrow. And uh, but things are on here. If you have any questions, kind of write them down and. Uh, if you need things explained, kind of write that down too, but it seems like it's self-explanatory in this um, financial that she gave us, the comparisons. And this is up to November uh, 2018. So this is all the way from seven, it's seven months. Okay. The next item is the forensic audit request for proposal, Trustee Belief Bureau. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, for years, South Village officials have improperly shifted water and tip monies to the general fund to plug up multi million dollar shortfalls. Officials have acknowledged that fund transfers have been standard practice for years and have created massive debts that we can't dig out of. South Village has been living beyond its means for quite some time. The concept to borrow from Peter to pay Paul is just our reality. The purpose of this RFP is not to imply or accuse anybody of any wrongdoing but will be used as a tool to justify expenditures related to South Village finances. In an effort to address financial sovereignty, trustees should know where the money is, what the money has been used for, and how much is available without borrowing more money. With that being said, I have provided you a copy of a proposal, a draft proposal, that's a request for a proposal, to be, real, to be reviewed by the trustees. This is no means a comprehensive RFP, but a template for talking points that can be used by the trustees to finalize an RFP by the attorney. After review and discussion, I ask that a resolution for the allocation of funds be drafted by the attorney to include a not to exceed amount in the RFP. It's my understanding that most RFPs RFPs, forensic audit, financial forensic audit is about $45,000 to $75,000. The approval of this resolution and the approval of the RFP will be a win-win situation for all residents and officials. Our goal should to be to, our goal should be to know where the money is, firm up our financial status, and, co and collectively determine how best to utilize South Village funds and it in now and in the future. Um, I passed out a copy of a draft RFP for you guys to take a look at, come back with some questions, and we could talk about the uh, particulars of the RFP. Secondly, I also, uh, here's copies of memos sent to me by the finance director who uh, explains our financial status since she's been on board. So i like to give everybody that and I'm use this as a tool to go along with your uh, RFP, so pass that down. <clears throat> it's a really insightful uh, article about what's going on with the, uh, I'm sorry, let's go for the whole thing, the whole package. Yeah, to the staples. Oh, one of the five. 
Two page, two page. Okay, we're gonna need another two individual pages. So what we would like, I would like you to do is take a look at the RFP. It's a draft. Can't say that enough. It's a draft. We're looking for some insight and some input from the trustees on what's just happening with the finances here in Salt Village. Uh, as you know, uh, I have been trying to get copies of uh, reports, and uh, I have run into roadblocks. Um, since August to try to get some information about um, what's going on with our finances here. Um, also, it attaches a, a letter from my attorney requesting that uh, I have access to expect records and I want to be there Thursday to look at those records uh, because I can't get anything. And I, I what, what is your name? I'm, I'm going to get it to. So here's a copy of the letter, and, it's, and I'll be there as my right to do as a trustee in court of Illinois State Statutes. I'll be Thursday at 10 o'clock, so anybody who wants to join me, we can talk about uh, what's going on with our finances. So here's a copy of the letter. I think she sent it to you, um, <coughs> email too. And after we redo, redo that, then we could uh, make a decision on, uh, or maybe you, you guys are more than willing to give up the information about the finances. Okay. And that's the end of my request. I do have one question. Yes. You have a private attorney. I'm In other words, what I'm saying is, yet, you you, excuse me. I'm not prepared to answer to you. At that you time. said you have an attorney. That's what I'm asking you. Do you have? Is this attorney your your attorney? I'm not prepared to answer you at this time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Is that the end of your report? And I ask that you put it on the agenda for next week for uh, to do what? Ask any questions so they can finish elaborating on. Uh, put it on I the understand agenda. this. The next week is for 19th. Right. Yeah, on the 19th. And that time, in the meantime, they'll be sending questions and uh, asking questions and getting additional information. And we can discuss it again. Is that it? That's it. Um, I, have, sorry, I have a question. Sure. Can I get a copy of your <laughs> statement that you led off with? No, it's just So. Understood. So if you would please, could you maybe put together a paragraph of what your intention is by conducting the forensic audit? Because what I heard you say was that you just want to know where the money is, and that's what our regular audit does. So I don't understand the need for a forensic audit. So I need to understand why you feel the need for a forensic audit. Never know what's going on. We don't know what's been paid in and out. 
We don't know what's been transferred. Those are the kind of things that we need to know. And this report that we just got tonight, well, we didn't get time. We had it in our packs. That mm -hmm. tells us where we're at for the seven months of this budget year. And it gives you a detailed ledger about the different things in the different funds. It gives me a summary level. If I have questions, I can go ask Judy about any one of these things. Like, I've got question marks, and since she's not here tonight, I know I can go in and talk to her and, tell, and ask her, why are we unfavorable to plan on this particular line item? And she'll sit here and, and, and go through them with me. Okay. You might have that privilege with Judy. She doesn't have that privilege with me. And not only that, I want a detailed ledger about what was spent on each line item that comes up with a balance, that has a balance. Mm -hmm. I want to know what the money was spent on. I don't want to know a bottom line. I can, I can tell you that, but you can't tell me what it was spent on. I want to know the details, a detailed ledger of what's been going on, and that's something we should have uh, when we come in here and, and talk to everyone. So, you know, that's something. So, Mr. Mayor, who's going to, is Judy going to present all this stuff uh, to the lawyer and then, I mean, so the lawyer is making us do this. That's what it looks like. So, is Judy going to be on hand or here to kind of go through all of this stuff that day at that time? As I asked what type, since the lawyer is involved, and that's what I was trying to find out, is this a personal lawyer or whatever, so if you're having a lawyer make you do X, Y, and Z, then quite naturally our lawyers need to be present. have to be involved in it too because I'm not going to have a lawyer come in and do whatever and then our lawyers not be there to make sure that it's done correctly per the village. The village lawyers have to be there. So I don't know, that's why I asked the question, but I was told I'm going to be able to respond. So as of right now, I did see this letter. I do, I have to pass it on to our lawyers to make sure whatever they're asking for, they can obtain, they can get, not just because a lawyer came in and said X, Y, and Z, that we're supposed to do X, Y, and Z. And that's why I was asking, is this the trustee's personal lawyer, or is this something that somebody else, and that question wasn't answered. So as of right now, I don't, I've asked you that question, and you said you couldn't answer. So I asked, I'm going to, Excuse me, I'm not through talking. I'm going to find out from our lawyers our next step. Because once you get lawyers involved, then it means it's more than just asking questions. Now, you're, you're getting legalities in place. And before I do any legalities, I have to make sure that we're doing I'm not a lawyer. So I have to make sure that whatever's being done is being done correctly. That's why you pay lawyers to make sure. Because once you get lawyers involved, it's a different ball game now because now other things may be asked, other things may be submissible as evidence in a court of law in case something may or may not happen. So that part being done and there's the lawyers involved, then I have to get our lawyers involved to protect our well-being as a village. So okay. and let's make some clarity. Uh, Trustee Grant, no place in this particular document does it say a lawyer is going to be present. It says this is advance notice that Bernice Brewer, a duly elected and serving village trustee, on Thursday, it has absolutely didn't say anything about the I, I, my lawyer did write it up, but it did not say my lawyer is going to be present. I'm going to be there because I'm a trustee. I'm entitled to documents. Now, for some reason, you guys want to keep me from seeing these documents. You have to let me know. But now, are you saying that you're going to be financially responsible for paying for this? For this order, this is seventy-five thousand dollars. Oh, it is. So, well, one, more, one more question, trustee. So, Thursday at ten o'clock, they're going to go over this document that Judy's going to go over tonight. That's what it seems like. No, 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 not, not the audit. I'm so you said you want so A A through I. They're gonna go through all this on Thursday. Well, I'm trying. And, and, and I'm working as a trustee on Thursday. 
Right. So all of the things, well, 90% of these things that are on here are in this packet that Judy's about to go over tonight. She's not here, unfortunately, but I'm just letting you know that it's all, 90% of it is in this packet. Well, no. No, no, no. So I, I think she, so. So Thursday is Thursday is kind of like they want to go over the budget versus the actual. The the audit is a separate issue that's independent of this. So, so I just want to make sure that Judy's prepared because I mean, if she wants to see invoices, trustee wants to see invoices, it's going to be a lot of invoices. So you might want to let her know about this well, ASAP. That's I'm not. I'm just letting the mayor know. He might want to let Judy know about this as soon as possible because if she wants to go over detailed invoices, a lot of invoices go over, and she's going to have to pull all these invoices. I'm going to say it again. I said it a few minutes ago, and this I'm going to say it again. This letter that was written is penned by a lawyer. Yes. I don't know what trustee was talking about, but it says sincerely, Anish Parrish. That's the lawyer, the law firm. So it doesn't say that, you know, and then when trustee said we, I don't know who we is, because it said corporate authorities, and it said the inspection of any member of the corporate authorities, but then she said we. So I don't know who we are, and I need to know who that is. So once, as I stated before, we get the lawyers, a lawyer involved, I will make sure that we have some type of representation of our law firm having to be at this asking for whatever it is they're asking for. So I will find out tomorrow from our lawyers and let them know about this. Um, letter and let them know what our next move is because like I stated I'm not a lawyer so I cannot make that intelligent I can't make a decision intelligently without that's where we have lawyers first for so that's I don't know if this is going to take place Thursday or not I have no idea but I do know I'm going to give this to our law firm let them know what's happening they will advise us what we can do or what we should or should not do so if so a lawyer was involved so if, if there are voices to go over or anything, multiple documents, are we giving out copies to all the trustees? They're just like, it's an open meeting. So let everybody get copies of things? Like, how is that going to work? But see, the thing that I'm looking at, and this is just me, I've been a trustee before. To know and to ask where the money is going or spent, you get every two weeks an accounts payable. And it has all the bills itemized on that accounts payable, what they're paying for and what it is. Now, if you want to know that heading, that's why you get that in advance to find out, okay, so what is this heading? If this is for heritage, who is heritage? If this is for Olds to the Sturt. What is Olds, who is Olds to the Sturt? To ask those questions. But now I understand, and that's what I understand about the trustee because for the last year and a half to almost two years, Every week, every other week, there was correspondents wanting to know about, can I have this information, can I have that information, can I FOIA this, can I FOIA that. I know for, for, for just what I collected at that particular time, there was a stack of papers, maybe three or four hundred pages. So to say that you're not getting it, okay, I don't know what you do with it when it does happen. I do know there were pages that I had that never were picked up that were asked about. That being said, when, and I'll say it again, when the lawyers are involved, when I have a lawyer that's involved in asking questions, I'm gonna pass it on to the village lawyers and let them tell me what my next step should be. I don't know. 
I'm not going to just up and say I'm going to do this and then to find out I did something that I shouldn't have done. So that's why we pay lawyers. That's why when you have lawyers and you get lawyers involved, you better believe that they're there for the money. They're there to get paid regardless, win or lose. They're going to get paid either one. So now we're going to have two sets of lawyers, the lawyers that were trustee got and then the lawyers that the village has to get to make sure that everything that's being done is done properly. So mm -hmm. I just, I'm, like I said, I'm going to let them know tomorrow's Wednesday. And then I'm sure they'll let me know before the day is out. And then just one more question in regards to the audit uh, for forty-five to seventy-five thousand. Just what do you mean for prison? Yeah, I just want to know. Like, low end. Yeah, who's going to pay for it, or where's it going to come from? It has, has to be voted out through the board. You know, like every other dollar is voted out. I, I didn't know there was money in the in the budget for for forensic audit, but that's on the low end. And I've, I've seen corporations that do that. Now, we're not a corporation, but we're a village, but a forensic audit is what they mean. They check and look for every little thing, and it's not cheap. It's definitely not cheap. So I need to, and I'm sure the board doesn't know, because it was not brought in today, how much it would possibly cost. Need to see something that is going to cost X amount of dollars, and because it, it ain't charged by the hour, and it's hundreds of dollars an hour. I don't know how many hours they're going to spend doing whatever it is they're going to look for. So, but that money, we're jumping ahead, has to be voted out by the board. I have one more comment. In regards to the inspection that I requested and the audit, I requested that the As I stated, okay, but well then that's where I'm standing. If you brought the lawyer involved in it, you better believe and make sure that the village is protected. So I don't know what it is that, that you just read off or whatever, but you have a chance and opportunity each and every week, each and every day to come ask questions. You chose not to, you chose to get a lawyer to intervene. When you chose to get a lawyer to intervene, now I have to get a lawyer to make sure that whatever is being done or being said is done right. That's that's what I have to do as, a, as the mayor of the town and to make sure whatever this lawyer is telling us or whatever the lawyer is saying, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't even know if that's or whatever. We have to get a lawyer because now you went past, let me look at the books, you went, you went to say, I got a lawyer that says I need to look at this. And when, once you did that, then it's a different ball game because now you got a lawyer involved and I have to make sure that the village is covered. <coughs> Um, it was asked that you state that, uh, is that the one I, is that the one in there? Could you, could you restate the statute that you 65 ILCS 5-3-1-35-4. That's right here, right here. It's in right the, uh, there. Never mind. Okay. Is there anything else? Okay, annual, uh, next item on the agenda. The public hearing. Every year we have a public hearing, and this will be our annual public hearing. From um, it'll be from um, our in, um, engineering group. It'll be here next uh, next week, next uh, Tuesday at six forty-five. We'll have the public hearing right before we have the board meeting. So the public hearing is scheduled for the twelfth of February. And they'll be talking about the pollutant discharge elimination system. And um, it's something that we do each and, every, um, each and every year that we have to do. And um, Mr. Zarnick will be here to, um, to express and to go over that. But uh, you got the 
Uh, paperwork, you can kind of look it over if you have any questions or you can disseminate it. But it's basically something that we do each and every year. So there's nothing different about it. But if you have any questions ahead of time, feel free to uh, write them down. So when, we, when he does go over that, we can, um, you'll, have, you'll be able to answer those questions. He's prepared himself to answer those questions. Next Tuesday at 6.45, right before board meeting. The next item, emergency and mass notifications. Uh, Village Clerk, Marvin Campbell Food. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, if I may, may I ask uh, Director Alan Verbrick to come to the front? Mayor? You just... Yeah. No, I've asked you about sure. it. Sure. Thank you, Director. Uh, in your packet is a document that says Code Red. And I just want to give an overview of why I continued research on Code Red. I had talked about it with the trustee a while back but we didn't act upon it. And then a few weeks ago, a citizen asked if we had a notification system in place in case of emergencies. And so it reminded me of Code Red. Then, this past week, with the severe weather and my attempts to keep our public informed to the greatest extent possible in terms of what was happening with the weather, the openings, the closings of the schools and everything. Again, it sent me back to visiting our surrounding villages' websites for information regarding this. In this document, I also included an email from the organization which was just the communities that are right in our general area. And as you can see, I believe it's about 15 of them that are using Code Red. It's not an expensive notification system. Um, however, the document provided provides an overview for you to just look at and really what you have there are really two different ones. One is Unsolved, and then the last couple ones is their competitor, which is to alert fine messaging. So I did provide you with two different, um, two different sources for us to look at. This evening, I'm not asking that we make a formal determination what can happen is the first company, OnSav, is available to present to us a presentation at our next committee meeting. And so really all I'm asking at this point is for you to let us know if you think that this would provide value for them to provide a formal presentation. They will not be on site. It will be, I believe, video or either audio. So we would have to come with our great listening skills. I ask that our emergency management director come to the front simply because he has personal experience with it and I would like for him to share with you the value that he sees that it could bring to our village. Thank you guys. At this time, um, the village where I live at, I live in South Chicago Heights, we have Code Red. It's an outstanding system. If there's something goes on in your town, as far as a prime example, we had a, we had a stabbing in our town. It was involved with a mother, brother-in-law, and the two kids. Uh, we got a Code Red emergency over our phones and an email. Uh, stating of the situation, uh, letting the village people know that uh, the residents know that there is no further danger to anybody else. Everybody was in custody or everybody was under investigation. 
Um, it, it brought out a lot of information to the public to where not the normal person would hear if uh, there's, there's not a system in the, of this nature. It also uh, informs us too of uh, road closures, if there's a road closure, if there's a water main break, or if there's a boil order, or something of that nature for the village residents. Uh, it all comes out across this here. There's two different ways that we get our system out and everything. Uh, we go through uh, emails, or we also get a phone call and, and a text over your phone. You have to sign up for the system. It doesn't cost anything to sign up. They just ask you for your information. And I provided uh, uh, Clerk Marvin Campbell Pruitt a copy of the email that I received from Code Red when I initially signed up for it. I also received a, a notification from the Village of Stager uh, in reference to signing up for their Code Red also. I'm in the process of doing that too for my own personal uh, safety and everything. Uh, that also uh, hooks up with the emergency services out there, their EMA. So if they got something going on, you know, we, we all are aware of what's going on in that system. It's a, it's a good idea, it's a good, good program. I, I'm backing it 100% and I'm hoping that you guys take a look at that information. And uh, when the presentation comes out, I hope you guys uh, will come on board with that also. Uh, three three questions. Uh, first question is, how do we get residents engaged so they sign up, email, cell phone, whatever? Second question is, who's going to run this? Like, who's going to be responsible for sending alerts out? What to, what gets sent out? And the last one is, if I remember correctly, a while ago when we had the presentation for the website, I thought that we had a special feature that what we can do. Uh, residents can, I mean, somebody, whoever runs the website can send out an alert, and I think each department had their own page or something like that, and they can get, they can send out notifications about what's going on. So, are we doing away with that and, and replacing it with this? So, I will answer from the website perspective that the website, the department heads will have their own page, that on the website, they will have the ability to put news information on the website so that if you're on the phone, it will be available on the website. That does not, though, give you an email or a push notification, which is what this does. So it's a different mode of communication. I can't speak to the other questions, so I'll let these guys do that. Who would be responsible for heading this up? I would hope that it would be between EMA our public safety committee, as well as the village clerk. We are the ones who are ultimately responsible for notification for the village and the communication of it. Keep in mind that even though this is a village of Salt Village initiative, it would be operating from the village of Salt Village's website, this would be open to public works, our police department, if something is happening in the schools, like there was a, a water main break today, and as a result, schools at well, Rickover will be closed tomorrow. It would push that type of notification out. So this notification would go to all of our residents who reside in South Village, one per household though. So then they would have to assume responsibility a notification at 2.30 in the afternoon that there is a major accident on 394. So it would give you an opportunity to plan another route. So I don't think that it's invasive, but it's very informative. Yeah, and, and you know, you made me think, Marva, too. The website does, SOX does offer the ability to turn the information on the website into a push notification at an additional cost. It, it would be something that would be another alternative that we could look at if it was something we wanted to pursue through them versus Code Red or the other company that, that Marva's got handy here. It would be you know a third option we could consider. And I am willing to do the groundwork, you know, to continue to bring information back to you. I know both companies would like to provide demos for you. And so we 
have the information from SOX already. So we would pull that and, and then just schedule each one of them doing separate, I would hope, committee meetings so that they're not here competing against each other on the same day. This is not something that we just have to rush into, but you know, as we move toward planning and how to ensure safety and enhance communications within our village, I think it's worthy of taking the time to do the research and make a very informed decision. Code Red is not expensive. You know, it's less than $4,000 a year. But, you know, I'm not going to go any further into all of that because I would want you to ask questions and for the company if he's going to expend time to give us a demo to have an opportunity. So really, I would just really, I'm asking, do you see the value? Should we move forward and request a demo on February the 19th? I, mean, I don't think there's any harm in having them come out and give a presentation. Um, I think it's a good system. I mean, it sounds like it's good, but you know, definitely have them come out and then we can make a decision. And just keep in mind that this quote is only good for 90 days. Uh, it says at the top up here. I'm not sure if it goes up a lot or it doesn't. Okay, okay, just, just thought I'd point that out. So it would not be attached to yours. I only attached it to mine so that I could have them both. They're both on the website. Um, for you to do additional research. Now the email that they, the second company sent me, gave quite a bit of information. So if you would want me to email that email that they sent me today to you, I can do that. You want me to do that? Okay. So may we put it on the agenda for December 19th? Yeah. February. 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 What did I say? December. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you, thank Director. You. All right, um, the next item is a resolution for the improvements under the Illinois Highway Code. This is every year we try to get money from um, IMFT. This year is allocated, we're trying to get 320,000 for the um, 221st Street, 221st Street going from Salt Trail to Orion to resurface that area. Uh, we always ask for for that, we always ask for more, but hopefully we can get something close to that. Um, this is something that we do every year. Last year was 223rd Street, this year is 221st. Uh, and if we have, get money from other areas, I like to go around, um, I forgot, I'm trying to think the name, I think it's Paxton going all the way around, coming through Shirley. So in that area right there, we can get enough to, to, to do that little curve going around there to redo that too. But this is something that we enter the preliminary construction engineering service agreement for the motor fuel tax for the MFT uh, money. Um, and it, we have to have a project um, basically in the can to present this to IDOT. So um, I'm asking to um, put this on the agenda for next week to be voted on, to use um, this particular for this project um, for resurfacing that, that particular area. And it's on the second page where it says um, the section description.
You do? Huh? You do know that? I mean, really, because one year we didn't get nothing. study, we do this every year, we have to show what we're going to use the money for. We've always asked for more than what we get. This would be great if we get to 320, but usually they usually give us 200. And the CDBG, depending on who is actually looking at the paperwork, we may get our money, we may not. So we've always subsidized. So basically, we're putting the application in to apply to get this amount of money. We have to, it has to be designated for a project. So that's the project that we're using. And it has to be, just like 223rd Street, it has to be used for that. Now, I don't know what you're saying about we have 100000 left in the MFT. I didn't the, say that. I didn't say that. MFT money comes in all the time. This is a special that we have for every year for a special project. MFT is used for a lot of different things in the village. I said we got paperwork, if I'm not mistaken, we'll be getting $100,000 or something. I never, I don't know what paperwork you're talking about. I'll, I'll get copies to make sure, because it seems like we may be getting $100,000 in MFT, and then we have uh, $200,000 in block rent, that's like $300,000, Resolution, and it looks like we're not going to have enough money for that. So, so trustee, it seems like we're just not having enough money. So, trustee, you're, you're, you're confusing again. The two, this, this, this right here is a, as I said on the second page, a preliminary construction engineering services agreement for the MFT funds for that one time. We get MFT money all the time. We're asking for this particular amount to come from them specifically for this particular project. So that has nothing to do with MFT that comes in all the time. We get MFT money in all the time. I think it's every other month. It comes in, I don't know how much it comes all, all the time, but there's money coming in each and every month from MFT. CDBG, Community Block Grant Funding, is something that we apply for every year to help us defray some of the costs that we, that we need to do in certain areas. And that's only qualified for certain areas. We have to be, uh, quali we have to have the qualifications, and that's why usually it is in areas that qualify for CDBG money. And that money is specific also, has to be used for what you, we put it for. So saying that we got money coming in, yes we do. But that money that comes in for, C for MFT, outside of this is used for other things that we have to use MFT money for. So I don't know, I hope we get M uh, CDBG, but there's been a time that I remember that we didn't get anything from CDBG. So we weren't able to do anything that particular year. This is, this is a great reason why we need uh, reports to find out where the money is. What money? That's the money that comes in this no. way is allocated. We don't even touch that money. That money goes straight to whoever it is that we, see but how much money's in there. that has nothing, one has nothing to do with the other. Okay. That money is already allocated. We can't, we don't even get a check. It just puts into an account and then in the contract to draw down from it. We don't, it doesn't go into our account. Money like that does not go into our account. It's allocated. Anybody has any questions on this? If not, I'll ask the clerk to put this on the agenda to be voted on next week. And the final item is the um, ordinance amending the, uh, chapter six on uh, the alcohol beverage establishments. Those are for our two and our three licenses for the hours. Um, as, we, as you all know that we do have um, parlors, gaming parlors in the village and our old ordinance had on there that the gaming parlors would be open from 12 to 12, I'm sorry, from 11 to 2, um, I would like to 
And men that from 8 in the morning to 2, 8, 8, 8 a.m. to 2 for the gaming power, those are the licenses that would be uh, um, not the not the lounges, not the taverns. These would just be the gaming parlors. Those are the R two and R three, basically restaurants and gaming parlors. So that's what that would be. Um, I gave everyone a copy of that, and um, I ask that this also be put on the agenda next week to be voted on. Yes, ma'am. From eight a.m. to two a.m. and on Sundays from twelve to twelve. Everyone has a copy of the... Yeah, I'm sorry, I was confused by what was there. Okay. So it said that it was deleting the stricken language and adding the following underlined language. I didn't see anything stricken or underlined. You didn't get, um, okay. Yeah, there's a copy that should have went out, but I thought it did. Hmm? Oh, in other words, it didn't say it didn't show the old. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. Okay. Well, then I'll make sure that you get a. Wait a minute. Okay. okay. And under G, I didn't. I guess I was confused then. So because number one said on Friday and Saturday between the hours of 8 a.m. and 2 a.m the following morning, and then two said on Sunday from 12 to 12, and then number three said between 8 a.m. and 2 a.m. on all other days, and okay. I'm like, well, isn't one and three really the same thing? Yes, they are. So why did we need one okay. and three? Shouldn't we just say Well, what I'll do Sunday? is I'll have, um, and I'll get a copy of, the, of this to everybody. I'll put it in their box tomorrow to show what it used to be. And then I'll see if I can get this one rewritten. And you're absolutely right. Friday and Saturday is the same as all other days. Yeah. So it should be all other days except Sunday. Yeah. OK. All right. I'll have that taken care of. And so you're you're getting in your box tomorrow to be in your box. And so we're saying then any other retail outlet is 2 AM to 8 AM? Well, it's. Or no, any other 2 a.m. to 8 a.m. Well, I'm looking at item H. Unlawful for the holder of any class R1, 2, or 3 to sell. Oh, no, they cannot sell. Though. They cannot sell. So that part is staying, right? Yeah, it's unlawful for them to sell anything between 2 a.m. and 8 a.m. Yeah. 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 It's unlawful. And that, that, that is in there. But I'll make sure that you get this. And I'm going to be in your mailbox tomorrow. So, and then I'll also get the other one. Because it does make sense. It doesn't make sense to have one and three. It can just be a Sunday from 8 to 2, 8, I'm sorry, 12 to 12, and then any other day from 8 to 2. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Yes? Okay, are you going to make it? Then you have to change this one on one and three. Okay. All right. Public comment? I'm, no, no, I'm going to give it to them tomorrow. Yeah. Did the trustees want an email better than having it in their packet? I mean, it's up to you. Want you want an email? Okay, but well then Madam Clerk, we'll just email them. Okay, we'll just email them to the trustees. Okay. All right, public comment. Our questions will be directed to the mayor. Each speaker may comment on any matter pertaining to the business of South Village. Each speaker is allowed one opportunity to speak for up to three minutes and may not engage in debate or common discussions. And at the end of the all public comments, I will address the public comments. Please state your name. Debbie Williams. Okay, first of all, I'd like to say um, with great presentation by CMAT. Glad to see you guys back. I'm looking forward to everything you're gonna to bring to the village. Also glad to see Code Red back on the agenda. It's been presented in different forms in the past, but push notifications are essential to Sock Village, so I hope the board receives that. 
I also wanted to say I attended a um, budget and finance committee meeting last month, very informative, and I am so glad that I learned the information that I did. All my questions were answered, and I, we did talk about the aging report, transfers going in and out of restricted and non-restricted funds, and what I also told them that evening when I would be presenting a letter, join that committee. I emailed that letter the very next morning, and I handed Trustee Grant a copy of my request to join that committee this evening. Um, as far as the finances are concerned, there have been a lot of questions that residents have asked, and they said they haven't gotten answers to. So part of it is the transfers in and out of restricted and non-restricted funds. So I think what it is is that we really need to get some hard and fast paperwork on where money has been transferred to and from and whether or not it's gone back. Because I understand there's this new term called operational transfers that don't have to get paid back. That's new to me. And I mean, I've been involved in the village for over 30 years as far as coming to meetings and listening to financial reports. So I'm not quite sure about that. I'd like to find out exactly what monies have been transferred out and back in in the past two years out of different <coughs> funds. And hopefully, when I do become a member of the Budget and Finance Committee, I can get those answers. Also, I would like to say, um, as far as the accounts payable report, when I sat there for eight years as the clerk, and prior to that as a resident, it always kind of made me wonder how trustees know exactly what they're voting on if all they get is the name of a company and what fund it's coming from and a very brief description of what you're voting the money out on. And personally, I would like to see as part of the Budget and Finance Committee that there is a meeting prior to the board meeting where the Budget and Finance Committee actually reviews, reviews all invoices prior to voting on the accounts payable. That way, when residents or board members have questions at the night of the meeting, we should have the answers because too often people are asking, what is this invoice for? And nobody knows. And I think that this is a practice that we should start as soon as possible. And excuse me, I had dental work today, so I don't know if you can understand me. But that's what I would like to propose on behalf of Budget and Finance Committee, because I know they do it at the school board, have done it for years, and then that way we have every personal knowledge of every dime that's being spent off that accounts payable, and then we know whether or not this is something the entire board actually wants to vote out. So I would like to see that done as, as, as soon as possible. And again, Code Red, CMAP, great job. Hope to see it come to the village soon, and I hope we can get a handle on the finances by previewing, reviewing the invoices before the meeting. Thank you very much. Rylander here, I live on 215th and Merrill. I don't know if this is germane to the conversations that normally go on here, but this is more or less a public safety uh, issue. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but there's a, several wild coyotes running around here, particularly along the farmers field right behind us. Matter of fact, Sunday when I left my house, one of them was out there real close. I could see his eyes even in the bushes growling and yipping and yapping. And my understanding is, from one of the police officers my daughter talked to by one of these groups of uh, marauders. My wife has come up to the village hall several months ago when these things first became apparent that they're taking up residence here and was informed that the, the village really has no responsibility there. Some <coughs> other agency is. They would make a call. I just wonder if that call was ever made to whatever agency it was. And if not, could it be done? I just like this uh, as a public record in case somebody does get mauled over there because that is a school park over there. A lot of small children frequent that area. I shagged them away from there uh, when they wanted to go into the bushes back here because of those wild animals. And uh, I just wonder if anything's been done about it or can be done about it. I know uh, police officers probably like some target practice. Hmm. They got to they gotta go. Uh, like I said, I saw, I've actually seen three of them together. They're like uh, running in a pack. So is any, anything on that, Mr. Burgess? Can you do anything about it? At the end, I'm running. 
I'm going to uh, address, I'm, and as I said before, I'm going to address our comments at the end of, of the comments. Oh, okay, great. That's all I need to say. Just wanted to put this on public record in case anybody does it. Carl Rylander, R Y L A N D E R. Carl Rylander. Kathy Batcher. Oops, sorry. <coughs> Too fast. Kathy Batcher. First of all, I'd like to say thank you, Marva, for bringing that to the board. Second, I, I know that the police aren't here, but I have to say thank you to our police department who is working so hard to keep this village safe and to Chief White, who has been, I, I listened to the scanner, he is extremely polite and respectful to every, everyone on that radio. And he cares about his policemen for their safety and their well-being. Kudos to all of our, our first responders. Now, I'd like to know, have we started the process to hire more policemen, because that we need. Second, I'd like to know if Trustee Carter has reached out to the now two people that have come before the board looking to help us with our, our um, children, to give them the programs that were brought here and, and see if we've got anything going with that. There were two very good programs brought before us. Um, third, have you hired anyone for the senior center or gotten any applications? Last time I was here, there were no applications. I'm not the senior center, I'm sorry, for the community center. There had been no applications put in that I understood. And now I'm going to be a bad guy here. I understand that Mr. Wizawadi needs a assistant. Where is that money coming from? We have been spending, and I'm going to say frivolously because there have been some frivolous expenditures lately, and I want to know, if, is the money going to come out of his salary, or where is this money going to come from? I thought he was qualified to do this job. If he's not qualified to do the job, maybe we need to hire a, a new economic development director that can do the job for the money he's being paid. Um, and that's my, that's my three minutes. Thank you. Couch. Um, something that I've noticed recently, um, I didn't get to come last week and see the accounts payable, but I understand there was an item on there that I don't recall it coming before the board, and I don't know where the funds came out of, but for a $4,000 Christmas tree that's still standing out in front of the village hall. Was that something that was voted on by the board to spend that kind of money? That's one question. Um, another issue is the dog issue that I have brought up for almost a year now, maybe longer than a year, that that pit bull is still running loose. And on January 23rd, that pit bull came after me personally, again. Luckily, I was able to chase it off my porch I called immediately to Chief White. He wasn't in. This was at 10.04 in the morning. And then I called dispatch, and I told him that pit bull was on my porch after me again. Dispatch did whatever they do. I told him I wanted to see an officer. An officer came. He took the report. He went to the house where that pit bull lives. The pit bull is still there. Now, in the process, Chief White had told me personally to contact him first, which I did, but he wasn't there, left a message. Then I called Cook County.
Cook County told me that they were aware of the dog, but they have to wait for Chief White to contact them to handle this dog matter. So from January 23rd to today, I had not heard from Chief White. This morning I called again, and I told Chief White, I'm still waiting for that phone call because I did leave a message. He told me he hadn't gotten that message or the video of the dog that I sent to him. Therefore, I will be here next week again to talk to Chief White about this dog. Number one, we don't know if it has its shots. That's money, that's revenue for the village. We don't know if it has a license. That's money, that's revenue for the village. So these are things that need to be addressed and there are more shootings the last three days. We've had shootings in the village. So where are our police officers gonna get their help? Another issue, there was an item brought up about shortage of pay for our police officers. Has that been resolved? I had the understanding that there were some police officers did not get their full pay. I think that needs to be checked into. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, me and you had a meeting, I'm Gary Bell. We had a meeting in your office about this punching and stuff, and that was been, what, three, four, five weeks ago now? I'm still waiting for your answer. Am I covered when I punch it? Or, according to the great captain, I'm covered as soon as the tones drop. I just need to know. You were supposed to check with your attorneys four or five weeks ago. Your attorney was here last week, two weeks ago, I'm sorry. He didn't say he knew nothing about it. Second, last Saturday I had to call an ambulance for my mother. 18 minutes for a possible stroke. 19 minutes before the fire department could show. I, I called this bash dance for Crete and they told me, oh, we can't do that. That's kind of silly. I pray to God there's no in this room's family next time. That's all I have to say. Any more questions? Excuse me? I didn't either. I said, excuse me, what'd you say? Um, as far as going back to the, um, the accounts payable and the um, suggestion, that there's a that they meet with the counts payable personnel every that would be every two weeks because the counts payable is done every two weeks. Um, if 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 that's if that's at all possible, I don't even know if that is even possible. But if it is, if a person when they when a person gets their um, I'm sorry when a trustee gets their accounts payable, they should have at least three to four days to ask questions, preferably that Monday or that Tuesday before the, the meeting, to ask about certain things that are on there that are, um, that you don't know anything or the, that you have uh, questions about. But then again, questions are being asked at the board meeting. So, I mean, I don't understand where that would be a problem, but if it is, then okay, maybe we can look into trying to see what we can streamline and um, have more, I think it's self-explanatory, but a person may not, so therefore, if they have some more questions, they have no problem with coming, whoever gets the uh, accounts payable, when the trustees get the accounts payable, they can come up to the village, I'm sure the personnel will be here and ask those questions. So I have no problem with that, and um, I understand that um, you asked, well, the person asked about joining a committee, um, that's up to the committee as far as and if they, I'm sure now that you said, they will be getting back with you in regards to your application to, to join the committee. Um, on the next note, as far as coyotes running wild, I've been in Salt Village since 1982. I've seen coyotes everywhere, all the time. 
where I lived at, and the two places I lived at, counties have came up to my place, and outside of me trying to shoot and hopefully I make it or, or, or hit them and don't miss and then they get me, I'm not going out there with a gun and, and I may shoot wrong. But that being said, I will check into um, the sheriff's police in the park district, that's Cook County Park District, to find out personally, and I will get back to to the village about the, um, what they can do as far as coyotes. Like I said, I've seen coyotes since 1982. I've been out here since that, that period of time, and I have yet to see somebody come out to where I live that and shoot a coyote or come behind where I live that to deal with coyotes. I've never seen a coyote um, picked up. I understand that. I understand that. And like I said, I'll check into it. I'll check into it to find out what agency we need to talk to and let them know that we have an outbreak. Um, I said that we were going to hire police officers, and we are. You just can't hire them overnight. I mean, there's step, steps that have to be taken. Those steps are being put in place as we speak. Things are being talked about as we speak because it's not just you go out there, hire police officers, they come in and start working tomorrow. There's, there's statues and there's things that have to be taken care of, but I've already put it out there to the, the proper people that this is what I want to have in place, and hopefully we can have this done within the next few months. But it's not a, like hiring a person from the front office, there's a lot of things that have to be done, and if anyone's a police officer or have been a police officer, they would understand that there's steps that have to be taken to, to hire a person. The community center hiring, I have it out there. I've had volunteers. I was lucky enough to get volunteers. I still have somebody that wants to volunteer to do that. I haven't gotten anybody yet that, that's, that's willing to work part time. So at this particular point, I'm continuing to use the volunteers to make sure that, uh, that they're able to do it and go with that until we can get a qualified person that we can start off with a part time. Um, As far as um, hiring a person in the village, there's nothing changed. Um, when a person left, re resigned, as you say, as they say, that person resigned. So I was trying to fill it with a part-time or two part-timers for that. And that's what that is. It's nothing, it's nothing different or added into the budget for that, that we've, already, we've already had, or we had a part-time person, that person resigned too, never got a chance to fill that particular position. So um, right now there's no extra money coming out of the budget, everything is still within the budget, and if it does come out, if anything does differ with the budget, I'll definitely bring it to the board to be voted on because if it's not something that's in the budget or budgeted for, then yes, the trustees have to vote on it. Um, as far as the Christmas tree, that, that money was, that, that particular thing, uh, particular item was put on the accounts payable. Yes, it was voted. The Christmas tree that we had before was here back, I've seen it since 1982, and I'm sure it was there before that. I, this is the first time I saw a new tree since I've been in the village. And if it cost $3,900, that's what it cost, and where the money, the money came out of the budget under um, expenses. So there's no, someone just went out and said, okay, get a tree, we bring it in here, this is what we're gonna charge, and, and that's it, that's not what happened. Um, those were some of the things that we, it was in the budget to, to upgrade and update certain things. I mean, nothing lasts forever. The next thing that's gonna be looked at is the lights that go across uh, Salt Trail right there at uh, Jeffrey Avenue. I think we got, that thing lights up maybe four or five lights right now. I don't think that, he, it, that, that many work on that. So hopefully next year, that'll be something else we can look at. Things have to be updated and upgraded in the village. That's, that's what we have to do. I mean, you don't use the same whatever in your house. You update and upgrade, upgrade certain things in your house. I mean, the village is no different. We have to upgrade and update certain things. Nothing lasts forever. Um, I have talked to the chief about the shootings, and I'll say this and I'll say it again. Police officers can't stop shootings. We can, they can deter, 
and that's about it. But if a person wants to shoot another person, we don't know what's in that person's uh, mind. At least I know, and I don't think a police officer can tell that that person is going to walk by and shoot someone. We try to put deterrence in, in progress, um, trying to deter people from doing that. And we're hoping that some of the things that are in society, like jail and electric chairs, will stop people from shooting people. But you can have as many, you can have a, a thousand officers. You see how many they got in Chicago. It's not going to stop shooting. All we can do is hope that people will start taking value in their own life and not trying to take their life into their hands and try to shoot somebody. It's all thing you can do. Putting the police officer out there is not going to stop the shooting. We just hope that the, the people that are involved will stop shooting one another. And there's nothing gained by that. And that's all we can do. In, 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 uh, in that part of it. But like I said, we will be hiring more officers. Um, as far as not getting paid, I stated last week that uh, to my knowledge, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't know of anybody that did not get all of their check, but I'm not going to discuss paychecks at open board meeting. Just like I'm not going to discuss uh, what the gentleman asked about punching in. If you want to talk about punching in or punching out or what we talked about, I'm here every day. Every day. So you can come in and talk to me, but you're not going to talk about your pay punching in here in front. Because now all, you, all you're doing. I get it. I'm in my car. I try to punch in to answer a fire call for this town. I'm not going to pick up a car, which I'm not allowed to take on, which I never have. When you spoke, you was up there at that podium. When you were at that podium, sir, I didn't interrupt you. I didn't interrupt you. I just let you say what you had to say, and you said what you had to say. Now I'm talking, and now you want to interrupt me, but that means that you don't respect that. So all I'm telling you is, pardon me? Um, general comments from the um, trustees. Um, we start with Trustee Todd. Trustee Carter. Trustee Tate. Trustee Gray. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Debbie, I just want to respond back to you. Uh, thank you for coming out to the meeting uh, last month. Looking forward to seeing you come back uh, for the next committee meeting. Uh, in regard to your question about uh, having the committee uh, get together like an hour before the meeting and kind of go over the invoices. So, in just my opinion, um, so if you look at accounts payables, you probably pay 70, 80 different line items. To go over all of those invoices would take more than just an hour. That's a couple hours of time. So, um, when I look at the accounts payable and I get it, if I have questions on anything or if anything looks funny to me, I'll go talk to Judy, uh, usually around 6 o'clock or so, and we kind of, kind of hash that out. But to say that I go over every single invoice, I'll be saying uh, that would be a lie. And because it'll take hours to go over every single invoice because each, we probably pay four or five different invoices under one line item. So that's a lot of things to go over. But uh, if it's something that you want to discuss um, about uh, meeting and, and reviewing that before, that's fine. But I uh, just wanted to let you know that. And thanks again for coming out. Just wanted to mention that the public safety meeting is tomorrow night. And uh, just to add on to the coyote conversation as a reminder, they're going to be more active right now because it's mating season for them too. So uh, just beware, they're going to be more active than usual right now. And that's going to probably be the case until the end of February. That's all I have. Trustee Brewer. Fire department and the police department was an outstanding job. These last three or four days it was brutal out there. What can I say? They did an outstanding job. But the I want to emphasize how important it is to get detailed measure on how the money is being spent to the bills. We have been sitting in the uh, been on this board for two years and yet we do know what the bottom line is according to the um, uh, um, building summary that we did. But however, we don't know what the details are. We don't know what bills have been paid. We don't know what interfund transfers have been paid. 
you know, they say they give us these things, but if they get them, I don't have them. So it's most important to find out what's been going on with the money. We have $2.3 million that we have received from the water fund from May this year long. We have a balance over $600,000, a little over $600,000. What did we spend on the money? We understand that we had to pay employees and bills and stuff, but I'd like to know which employees we pay, which bills we pay. Those are things that we need to know. And the finance, according to what I know, the finance director is not holding her information. Now, this is an issue that we're going to talk about on Thursday. So, it's not only me, it's other people because people. Uh, residents come up here every week and ask where it's going on with the money. It seems like it's been a simple thing to say. Well, according to this, this is what's going on with your finances. I don't see any problem with that. It's public knowledge and that's the information that we should have. And that's the end of my report. Okay, um, I just have one last item. Um, on the agenda for next week, uh, we voted on it already about, and we talked about the boundary. Uh, we talked about the annexation. We talked about the boundary agreement. Uh, you'll be getting a copy of the boundary agreement that was provided to us. Uh, if they do have it, okay. And this will be put on the agenda next week to be voted on the boundary agreement between Saw Village and Creek. That being said, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. Second. Moved by Trustee um, Zupai, second by Trustee Brewer. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Have a good evening.